everybody. I'm Tish. Um, I'm the Master Sensei of the VO Dojo, and this is uh, Voice Over the Actor's Secret Weapon, uh, why every performer should have voiceover in their money-making um, arsenal. So glad you could join us today. I know it's a busy, busy time of year. <laughs> so we'll just give everyone a few seconds to um, to jump on here. Um, I'm going to launch a poll um, that just uh, will give me a little sense of where you're at on your voiceover journey. Um, in some ways, you know, I'm, I'm not expecting that. I'm not expecting that a lot of people have a lot of experience, but this just helps me gauge. And really, what this call is about is to um, answer questions for you. Um, you know, if, if it's something that you've thought about or, um, you know, people tell you all the time, um, the, the, this, this is, this is a, this, the, this webinar is designed to get some answers, quest, or questions answered and, um, you know, open you up to the possibilities of, of what, what can happen when you do add this to, um, to your mix. So good, good, good. Excellent. Good. So we've got a nice, nice blend here. And if you, um, if you want to uh, write in the chat where you're, um, where you're joining us from, that's always a really cool um, thing to know as well. Um, and one of the beautiful things about voiceover, uh, in especially in today's day and age, is um, you can do it from kind of anywhere, anywhere with the internet. Um, so great, excellent, get those going. All right, in the Netherlands, excellent. That's very cool, welcome Kimberly. And Jules, wow, Jules, <laughs> it's so lovely to see you. Temecula and Charles, hello my dear, how are you? And Oregon, Burlington, and Shay, I think you're already, you're already in, on board. I'm excited to get to work with you. Um, Awesome. And Jay, you're a comedian. Fantastic. Um, actually, Jay, that, that as, we're, as we're waiting for people to come on uh, for just one more second, um, it would be great to hear what you do. Are you an actor? Are you a singer? Um, none of the above. This, you know, um, really, you don't have to be a performer to do, um, to do voiceover, but that would be interesting to, uh, to hear as well. I'm going to get the presentations up while we're doing that. Awesome. Yeah, everyone, everyone who's an actor or a singer should be doing this. But that's what we're going to be talking about. So um, let's get this party started. Um, so let me give a little, um, well, actually, we don't really need a tour so much. Um, um, we're going to be working in webinar mode, so it's mostly going to be me sharing with you. Um, I'm going to do an exercise um, to show you to show you how to do things. So we won't have a lot of interaction on this call, um, but I would like to keep track in the chat if you have any any questions. Um, I'll, I'll keep an eye on the chat here, and uh, Taylor, who's one of our Dojo team members, will be joining us and. Um, uh, she is going to be um, uh, in the background as well. So if you have questions as we're going along, I'll, I'll try and keep an eye in the chat there. And it is 10 of five, so let's get this party started. Um, so here's this, and let's make it big, and here we go. Can everyone see that? Everyone has the presentation up there? Yep, okay, awesome, great, great, great. All right, so um, welcome to the VO Dojo. We are a full training program uh, based in uh, Burbank, California. Um, we are here to guide, support, connect, and accelerate you every step of the way. Uh, from I don't know to working pro. So how do you, how do you take your voiceover career all the way? That's what, what we're about. 
Um, as we mentioned, today's webinar is called Voiceover, an Actor's Secret Weapon. Um, why, oh, there's Taylor. <laughs> hey, Taylor. Um, Taylor is uh, on, our, on our dojo team and she's gonna be here answering questions with you. Um, excellent, great, all right. So, um, so let me tell you a little bit about me. Um, uh, I'm Tish Hicks, I'm originally from Chicago. Um, uh, been out here doing voiceover for over 20 years in Los Angeles. I've been the voice of Subaru for the last seven years, voice of Citibank for seven years before that. Worked on all sorts of um, all sorts of uh, commercial campaigns, and I also work in pretty much all of the genres um, that there are. But uh, this is my life, <laughs> um, and it has been it has been my life as a performer um, for a really long time. Um, here's a little bit of my work. I like to walk the talk. Um, give you a little listen here. Let's see. Here we go. I love handling any situation I'm put in. I love going the distance and then some. I love when a good thing gets even better. I love my super enforcer. Yeah. <clears throat> Excellent. So as I said, it's really important to me that um, I'm, I'm in the mix doing this as I'm guiding you guys as well. So what is the VO Dojo? Um, as I said, it's a full training program um, that is designed to take you all the way. So um, there's four elements to the dojo. Um, we start with the You Should Do VoiceOver Intensive. It's a comprehensive overview and a little taste of everywhere where your voice can be making money. Um, if the way we're working sparks and resonates with you, um, we have a full 14 month training program called From Mystery to Mastery. That's like stepping into full training. Um, if, you were, if you're gonna become a boxer, we'll talk about that in a second. So uh, we're here to guide you every step of the way. Um, if you, uh, as you go out into the working pro world, um, the Mystery to Mastery program is divided into four belt levels. Uh, black, uh, yellow belt, green belt, blue belt, and brown belt, and then you earn your black belt. Um, and uh, then the nth degree is our working pro program as you're going out into the, into the world. If you're already a working pro, it's a place where you can hone and own your, you know, hone and own your work. Um, and then we have the VO Dojo Pro Fight Club, uh, which is our working pro workout that brings together top-notch talent with the decision makers who hire us. Um, so this is part of part of your work in the Mystery to Mastery program as well. So this is just a comprehensive overview of what we do here. Wherever you are in your journey, um, there's something for you here. Um, but let's start the journey first. <laughs> um, let's take a look. Um, yes, yes, yes. Let's take a look and uh, we we talked about where you're going, but let's let's take a look at what people are writing in the chat here. Um, we've got, oh crikey, hold on, what's going on here? Hold on a second, I'm having a little bit of cursor problem here. I think it's just me telling everybody to choose all panelists and attendees so that everyone can see their questions in the chat so far. Oh, okay. Hey, Taylor. We'll introduce you, my dear. Um, okay. I think, hey, everybody. This is Taylor. She is a valued member of our team here. Um, okay, I don't know what's going on. Um, so, hold on one second. Everything's gone cuckoo crazy here. Uh, I need to quit. Hold on one second. I'm just going to force quit the... Uh, presentation for a second here because I don't have a cursor. Oh my goodness, what's going on here? Huh. Okay, hold on a second. Okay, hold on one second, guys. We have a slight technical difficulties here. Um, Okay, hold on one second. Get the 
presentation back up here. Oops. And just so everybody knows, somewhere on your screen, you will find a little button that says chat. It's got like a little speech bubble on it. So that's where your questions can go. I'm gonna gather those so that when we have time for questions towards the end, Tish can answer them. If I have an answer, I'll let you know. So. Um, and just make sure if you want folks to see your question that you've selected to all panelists and attendees in the chat window. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you my dear. Thank you. All right, so. Get this going again. Here we go. And let me get my chat. All right. Okay, sorry about this, guys. Little, little brain aneurysm, just so sad. Okay. Um, all right, let's try this again. Here we go. Okay, so um, uh, as we started the call, I asked a little bit earlier uh, where you're calling from and, and um, who, who are you? So it looks like we've got a really nice blend of uh, hyphenates, of acting and singing and mocap. That's fantastic. Um, a, a Mary is a writer. That's fantastic. And now uh, narrates her own audiobooks. This is fabulous. Um, there we go. And okay, so I am um, okay. Um, so this is this is fantastic. This is this is exactly what this uh, is about. So let's let's talk a little bit about whichever whichever path you're on as a performer. Actually, as any human in the world, but as a performer in particular, um, we all know that there is the dream, and there is the reality, right? We usually start out. Um, <laughs> we usually start out at some point going, "Oh, Jiminy, I'm going to be an actor," and also at some point in the course of being an actor, um, everyone has had the experience of of feeling like I want to be smart. I'd, I'd rather be smart than be an actor, right? So we're always in this duality of of balancing, finding the harmony between the dream and the reality. Um, so let's do a little reality check here. So here's, uh, these are just some, some figures um, of, of how much money one can make working on stage. So I'll just flip these up here um, and what, what opportunities they have and how much work, work they take, right? So um, going from, you know, so the penultimate, right? If you're in a Broadway show, it's, uh, it's a good living and you're working and there's that many shows on Broadway. Um, and it kind of, you know, we, we know these realities so we can pursue our dreams, right? In LA, we pursue our dreams for a dollar um, and we fight for it, <laughs> we fight for it. <laughs> um, it's real and it's true. Um, on camera, um, always, um, you know, a, a good way to make a living, but how, how often are we working? Um, and rates have been shifting. Um, commercials are more buyouts than, um, than residuals, um, union, non-union versus union. So everything's shifting. Um, and there's ways of making money as actors, but um, how do we, um, um, how much time do they take and how often are we working? Those are questions. So one of the things that this webinar is about is introducing this idea that we all, as performers, need to be diversifying our acting income revenue streams, right? How can you take the skills that you have invested so much time and energy um, and heart and money into all the training you've done, all the experience that you have, and how do you, how do you make sure that you're optimizing it in all the ways that it, that it can be that it can be working for you. That's what we're going to explore here. So let's talk about why, why voiceover. Um, it really is one of the best jobs that an actor can have. Um, there's the potential to make big money. Um, I, I like to guide people to 
um, saying, well, why, why wouldn't you be working in a way that you'd be making six figures doing voiceover? You know, does it happen all the time? Um, you know, there, there's, there's, year, there's years that, that it's there, there's years that it might be a little bit off, but there's always the potential that you can and should be doing that. Like, why wouldn't you? Um, and you can make even bigger money than that. Is it as, as big a money as it used to be? Um, maybe, maybe it's harder. Maybe it's harder to make the money that you used to be able to, but it doesn't matter because it's not how it used to be right now. Um, there's a potential for big money. Um, as I was saying earlier, you kind of can do this from wherever you are. There's opportunity to be making money from wherever you are um, in a way that really wasn't possible uh, before. And there's longevity. This is work that you can do um, when you're young. If you're just starting out, if you're just starting out and, you know, in acting school, I totally encourage people who are in acting school to add this to their arsenal as they're going out in the world and it can serve you the whole journey. Um, and also you can keep on doing this when, you know, into when you're old. <laughs> um, um, June Ferre was like 97, I think. And she was working right up to the end. She's the woman who does um, the voice of Rocky, the flying squirrel. Yeah, um, so it's something that you can do for a long time. Um, let's talk about how do you make money? What are all the ways that you can make money? Um, I think sometimes we don't even understand how ubiquitous uh, voiceover is. It's everywhere. Um, and as I like to say, um, every time you hear a voiceover, somebody gets paid, right? Um, so this is, um, this is what I call a, a mind map of voiceover paths to cash. So these are all the ways that you can be making money with your voice. You can see that there's um, commercials, TV, radio, um, internet. Um, there's the whole realm of narration and all of the variations in there. Take a look at all of the different places and, and recognize like how, how and when you've heard those. Um, announcer, um, we're coming up to awards season. You know, this is the live, being a live announce um, is a way that you can make a living. And it's not just the Academy Awards. It's, it's the, um, you know, it's the real estate, real estate uh, conference that has the winners for the year and the dog shows. And, you know, there's lots of opportunities there. Um, promos, trailers. Um, promos are ads for something on TV or a television station or, you know, a, a network, a purveyor of entertainment. A trailer is an ad for a movie. Um, all sorts of different ways that, that there's trailers. Um, animation, of course. Features, TV, web series now. Um, video games is its own, own realm. Um, huge, huge industry. Um, there's a whole realm of working to picture. If you're, if you're an on-camera actor, you probably have done ADR, um, have gone back and, and picked up some lines or something like that. There's a whole realm of, called looping, um, doing the background. It's like basically voiceover background work. It can be very, very lucrative because you get uh, residuals for as, as if you were in the show. Dubbing, if you work in, uh, if you have, um, uh, if you have any uh, multilingual skills, this is a huge, huge market where you can be making money. Um, voice matching, if you can sound exactly like someone else, you can get paid when they're not available. Um, that can open doors. Um, there's the whole voice of things. Everything talks to us nowadays, right? Um, our phones talk to us. This, this also goes into the whole realm of uh, AI and artificial intelligence, which is in some ways terrifying um, as you know, people who bring ourselves and our voices having an artificial version of that. Um, uh, it's, uh, it, it can be terrifying, but it's also opening up a lot of opportunities. So um, just think about all the places where things talk to you, somebody's voicing that. And then there's this whole realm um, Broadcast and webcast. Um, podcasts are becoming a big, big thing. It's how people are, are relating to each other. Um, I call this the cousins of voiceover. So if you have broadcast background, um, I call it like having 
you have lots of skills that are applicable and it's a little bit different sport. But um, so this is, this is uh, a sort of like boom, all the places. Um, I'm having a little issue. Uh, let me see what I can do here. Um, I'm having a little issue um, with being able to see the presentation and scrolling down the chat. Um, but would love to hear your thoughts on this. Like, do, how? What what surprised you here? What what what, what put put in the chat? What one thing that you didn't know? Like what, what's a new realm that you didn't that you didn't know was there? Um, that would be interesting to see. See what um, what comes up for you, and then let's see. I'm going to while you're doing that. I mean, let's and let's uh, let's keep on going forward as we as we look at that. So here's uh, here's a, a little testimonial from um, uh, one of our dojo members who's in New York, and Eric is uh, uh, he did. Um, our basics program, and uh, here's, his, here's his quote. I just booked an in-person VO, had an audition for a commercial spot. At 4, 4 p.m. I was on hold, and I think by seven o'clock I'd booked the lead. In three hours I made as much money as I make in four days uh, on my job, right? So there's, there's the potential there. Um, so let's talk about what is voiceover? What is it? What is it? Uh, by definition, it is a piece of narration in a movie or broadcast not accompanied by the image of the speaker. So all of those things are covered. Um, at its essence, voiceover is an art form that serves commerce. This is really this is really important to know because all of those things that we looked at um, maybe mm, maybe if there's something like a PSA um, a public service announcement it won't be there to make someone somebody money um, but everything else is there to serve commerce and this is important um, because if you have any issues with that. Um, I, I, I like to say, get through it or don't do it, right? Everything will be fine if you don't do this, if it really is like not in your well. Um, but if you have problems with it and step in to do this, it can get in your way. Now, um, the reason that it can get in your way, oh, oh well, see, the, it's, a, it's an art form that serves commerce, and then that commerce, as you become part of it, serves your art form, right? So it, it becomes beneficial. Um, now, the reason that um, it's important to be clear with what we're doing uh, is this next idea, which is really the heart of, um, it really is the heart of the philosophy of the dojo. This is the foundation from which we drew everything at the, at the VO Dojo. And it is that voiceover is communication, and communication is an exchange of vibrational energy. That's it. What's going on in me is resonating so much that it goes through all the vibrational mechanisms of my speaking, of my connecting up, breathing, think, thinking, connecting up, breathing. It goes through my mouth, uh, through my vocal cords, which are vibratory, out the mouth, uh, and the resonators, which are vibratory, into your ears, which are vibratory and it's not until what's going on in me is somehow resonating in you that the communication actually happens right so when you bring everything down to that level this is where it becomes a powerful powerful thing for performers of all 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 walks right whatever you're doing as a performer this is where voiceover can not only help you on the, the financial side, right? It's not just about making money. It's also how you can deepen and open your work. I think a lot of times actors in particular say, oh gosh, voiceover, another thing that's going to take away from my on-camera career. 
Um, in fact, what I have found um, is that it, it does exactly the opposite. Um, and I want to share with you today this idea of a gradient of vulnerability. So if you, when we choose, when we choose to be actors, we choose a life of stepping into vulnerability. That's what we do for a living, right? And when you're on stage, there's a certain level of that, right? You, you, you going on stage is um, more vulnerable than being, you know, the person bagging your groceries, right? Um, and we're working with our full body, our eyes, our face, and our voice, right? When you think about switching to on camera, it's a different level of vulnerability, right? You have to be even more present and more really in it. And for the most part, yes, it's our body, but it's also for the most part, it's here and our eyes and our voice. With voiceover, we just have our voice and we just have this exchange of vibrational energy. So it's even more vulnerable. More sen the microphone is even more sensitive than the camera. Um, now for me, um, I'm a trained opera singer, but for many years I was a secret singer and had, a, it was um, singing is, for, for me is even more vulnerable because it's just a direct, direct conduit from above. <laughs> um, so for, for me, that, that's my experience with singing and then there's sex. So voiceover is somewhere in the middle of this and when we can lean towards the more vulnerable, um, that's, where, that's where this work lies. And if you think about it, um, if you think about it, what happens when someone is open and vulnerable with you, right? When, when, you, when you encounter somebody and you like them, um, what happens to your body, right? You relax, you open, and you lean forward, right? Alternatively, what happens when you're closed off or you're not vulnerable or you're, you know, uh, or, or someone is like that to you, right? Um, when someone's full of shit, what happens to your body, right? Um, yeah, great. No, totally. We'll, we'll, we'll totally be there, right? Yeah. So this is, and, and when you're open, then you're able to receive. Right? So this is a powerful idea. Um, there's a quote from Anne Kanengeiser, one of our other, another favorite dojo member. Um, Anne did the entire Mystery to Mastery program while she was on tour with Phantom of the Opera and uh, really, really accomplished and amazing actress. Um, and here's what she shared, a safe and nurturing program that teaches technical, emotional, and intimate aspects of voiceover. I've experienced a renaissance in all of my acting. This program has reawakened my love and passion for acting and my desire to communicate honestly, clearly, and with joy and love. So it never, never stops and just keeps on opening up new places. Um, all right. So how do you get there? That's where we come in. <laughs> um, how do you get there? Um, I think this is a really important question too, because I think a lot of a lot of performers, a lot of actors, go like, "Yeah, great. Uh, okay, that sounds like a great idea. What do I do?" And it's really easy to get stop and stuck um, on the journey because you don't know where or how to start, right? Um, so. One of the things that we do here at the dojo is open up the idea that there is a progression, a natural, so there is a natural progression from I don't know to working pro, okay? So there's just a, a thing that happens. And it looks like this. Um, here's I don't know, question mark. Here's working pro, money, right? So there's the opening of awareness. In the, in the dojo, we call that the white belt. That's who you should do voiceover intensive. Um, then there's taking the time to, op to explore and um, play and, and find out what this thing is about. Uh, that is our exploration period, and we call that yellow belt. Um, the next thing is, uh, so if, if yellow belt is finding out where the parties are, right, um, then the next thing is self-exploration. 
finding out what you're bringing, what you're about and what you're bringing to the party, right? This becomes your demo preparation. Um, the next step is demo production, right? Now you, you hone all of that in, create a product, a, a tangible thing that you can present to the world um, that does two things. One, it shows that you have invested the time and energy into making a professional uh, product. Um, and two, uh, demonstrates where your skills are, right? Of what, you're, what you are bringing to the party. And ideally, a demo will also be something that you can step in and deliver on, right? We can all take great headshots that we look beautiful and glamorous, but if you can't do your hair like that, or that's not how you actually show up, um, it's, it's a different experience, right? Um, and, then, um, and then once you have this in the world, how are you going to put, bring it into the world, right? Um, how are you going to integrate all of this knowledge and, and action into the world and move on to expanding it into being a working pro, right? Um, and each, each of you is going to have a different path, right? Because you live in different places and you have different circumstances. So this is going to be different for each of you. Um, but the important thing is here that there is a natural progression. This is how things go. And, um, and then uh, to, to know that, that there's, a, there's a methodology here that um, I think a lot of people, a lot of people go like, oh, well, um, how do I get my demo? Or how do I get an agent? Right? And I'm like, well, do you have a demo? Uh, no. Okay. Do you know how to read copy? Uh, no. Okay. Right. And not to say, not to say that helicopters don't come. We'll talk about that in a second, right? Um, we'll talk about that in a second. Not to say that it can't happen. Um, we just want, to, want you to be ready. So, um, so this yellow belt, green belt, blue belt, brown belt becomes the mystery to mastery program here. Um, so let's talk about what it takes, right? So, okay, that's, that's the progression. Great. Now, how do you get that started? What, what is needed to get from here to there? Um, one metaphor that I like to talk about is um, uh, thinking about it. If someone said, uh, if someone came up to you and said, people tell me all the time I should be a professional boxer, what should I do? And it's really hard to break into, right? Um, what would you say to them? What, what would you say? You'd say, well, okay, go into full training, right? If, if that's what you want to do, let, let's do that. So it's a great metaphor. Nobody gets, nobody gets punched. Nobody gets, you don't get hit in, you don't get hit in voiceover, but it does take that sort of focus and dedication to, um, to make it happen. So what does it take? We talk about five things here at the dojo. Um, first, decision, right? Nobody casually or happens to find themselves in the bout in Vegas. Um, nobody happens to find themselves on the top of K2. We'll talk about that as well. Um, so decision, you have to decide to do this. Um, mindset, the internal game is equally if not more important than the external game. Uh, when we're when we're working in this in this realm, um, technique. What are the tools, and how are you how are you getting to where you want to be? How how are you doing it? Application. Do it. Let's let's do it <laughs> in a guided way, and support. Right. You never see you never see a fighter in the bout in Vegas by themselves. There's there's people who help to get you where you want to be. Um, so those are the five things. Let's look at these in depth. Here we go. We started talking about this in a second. Nobody casually, you have to make a decision. Nobody casually finds themselves at the top of K2. You have to understand that getting to a top of the mountain is something you have to decide to do. Now, I started talking about this a little bit earlier. Um, that doesn't mean that, um, you know, there is the experience that the helicopter comes, right? So that means wherever you are from sea level to summit, when a helicopter comes, you notice I say when, not if, when a helicopter comes, get on it and ride it as far as you can, just to understand that you're not necessarily an um, a experienced mountaineer, right? So, and, and once you get to a base camp, then you probably need to make a decision of how far up the mountain you wanna go, right? 
um, and that it's not a matter of chance. It's a matter of you knowing exactly what you're doing and how to keep it going. So decision, mindset. Um, I want to share with you uh, some foundations of, of how we approach mindset here. Um, these come from, these were developed out of my work with my kickboxing sensei, Benny the Jet Urquidez. If you don't know him, look him up. He's, um, he's a pretty amazing uh, world champion. Um, so the, we at the dojo, we have the rules of voiceover and the rules of, or the rules of the dojo and the rules of, of voiceover. So I wanna share with you today, the rules of voiceover. So these are concepts that we keep flowing through everything that we do. Um, rules of voiceover, share your truth. Share your truth. Number two, trust your voice. Your voice is not anyone else's voice, it's yours. And trust your voice. Keep energy moving forward. This is within a piece of copy and in your career. Always, always keep everything moving forward. Listen carefully. It's an oral medium. You're probably on this call because in some way, shape, or form, you process the world orally, orally, from what you hear. You're probably tuned in and already understand this concept. Um, and listening is even more important in some ways than speaking, because it's about the exchange, right? And this is the most important rule of voiceover, is play fully. So it's play fully go for it and also playfully <laughs> it's it's a super 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 fun way to to be making a living it's it's absolutely absolutely brilliant so um and you can have fun playing uh yesterday i got a request for an audition from um a large <laughs> i'm just realizing nda stuff a large a very large video game company and was tasked with um uh here's this this character and she has a very specific dialect um and so in my work yesterday i had to go like oh let's uh, let's play and and find out about that dialect okay cool excellent that's what i got to do today um so let's go back to um the five things so th so that's we talked about decision we talked about mindset um decision mindset I want to share a couple of um, ideas of techniques um, with you today, show you how you can start thinking about things. Um, and then we'll do a little bit of applying and we'll, we'll continue on. So I want to share with you one of our foundational toolboxes. Um, uh, oh, well, first of all, um, the idea of technique is what you do all the time. Right. So the first the first technique that we teach um, at the dojo is not unlike in the martial arts when you remove your shoes and then um, bow into the mat as you come to do the work. Right. And honor when you are exiting with a bow as well. So how do you how do you when when you begin your work, how do you enter the zone? Right. How do you create a Zen bubble of whew, this is what we're doing. We're entering this place where we are going to create. Um, let everything else go. And I call this entering the sacred yes space. Letting everything go except for what you're working on and imagining where you're working. If it's, a, if it's your booth, if it's a closet, if you're at your desk, imagine it covered with post-it notes that just say yes, 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 yes. Everything is possible. Right? Um, this is interesting. This is where um, the, uh, the ethic of voiceover is very much like the ethic of improv. If you're an improviser, um, this is what we do. Right? Um, you do all the work that you do so you can show up on stage and create something out of nothing. 
um, voiceover is the ultimate something out of nothing because there really is nothing. Um, <laughs> there's nothing. It's just what you, what you create with yourself. So that's the first part of the technique. And I want to share, um, I want to share um, what we call our basic, uh, it's one of the tools of the basic tools in our toolbox at the dojo. Um, I call it the braid of analysis. Okay. Everyone with me here? Um, um, and Taylor, can you, can you keep me posted if there's any questions that I need to be addressing? Because I am not able to scroll down to, to be with the um to be with the chat so just keep on letting me know if there's if there's anything that that you think uh i should i should know about absolutely um, absolutely and everybody just make sure that uh um it sounds like if you send your question directly to tish she might not be able to get it so if you put that into the sort of the regular chat i'll handle that for you awesome excellent so here's this idea the braid of analysis so think of a braid right three separate three separate strands that are interwoven equally to create something that then has a different structural integrity that incorporates all of those things, right? So um, the three strands of analysis that we are going to explore today are connection, connection, logic, and energy, okay? And if you think of each one of these strands having two plies to them, this is what it looks like. So the first thing and the most important thing um, in this approach is connection. So two things, the two, two plies of that strand are finding out what resonates with you and because it, it's an exchange of vibrational energy, um, being very specific about who are you sharing it with. Okay, so those are the, that's, that's connection. Because if there's something in a script that you don't resonate with, we're going to feel that, right? So you have to find what you do resonate. In acting, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's substitution, right? Um, but that becomes part of our, that becomes part of our analysis. So find what, res so first find what resonates with you or what doesn't, right? And then who are you sharing it with? Now the second strand, um, oh wait, one more thing to say about connection. Connection is really the organic, the organic connection. And what I've found in, in working with people is I encourage them to see what happens when you pull in the connection thread first. Because usually what happens is when we're organically connected to something, a lot of the technical issues take care of themselves. Right. So I encourage you to play around with that. Um, so connection. The next strand is logic. This is what are you talking about and how are you saying it? Right. So knowing what you're talking about is really, really important. Um, uh, if you don't know what you're talking about, if I don't know what I'm talking about, then you're not going to know what I'm talking about. Right. If you don't know what I'm talking about, if you don't know what you're talking about, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, and then how are you saying it? How is it structured? What are the ideas? And, you know, is it an anthem? Are we, are we saying these are the points that make up who we stand for and what we are, it, right? Um, is, it a, is there a joke to it, right? So how are you saying it? How, is, how are the ideas coming across? And the third strand, connection, logic, the third strand is energy. How much energy does it take to deliver this message, right? I like to think of it as which, which ski run would you have to go down to deliver this message? Um, if, it's a, if it's a baby shampoo commercial, you really, um, when we brought our, our baby home from the hospital, giving her the bath, her first bath was the scariest thing ever, right? But Johnson is Johnson's made it not scary. You just need a, like a little gentle slope in your backyard. Um, if you're if you're telling me about the the one day only sale, it's it's the Toyota Red Ten one day only sale. Come on into Toyota and get your get your car for fifty percent off right now. It's just one day, right? You need a lot more energy for that. Um, okay, so those are the three tools. Those are the three tools: connection, logic, 
and energy. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the other part, I'm sorry, the other part of logic, um, the other part of energy, right? So we have which ski hill are you going down? And then the other part of energy is how was it flowing through, right? So if you've ever seen someone do parkour, you, you want to watch them and see what's happening with the energy. It's always moving forward. So how is the energy moving and flowing through the piece of copy? That's kind of our job to keep it on the journey. So uh, these are some basic tools. Let's see what happens. Uh, so we talked about uh, the five things, decision, mindset. We just shared a, tech, you know, a little toolbox of technique. This is like a hammer, a saw, and a screwdriver. We can do a lot with these. Um, so let's let's play around. Um, let's see where we're at with time because I want to make sure we have. Um, I want to make sure we have time for questions too. Um, yeah. So let's apply this real quick. Let, let me show you how this works. So here's a piece of copy. Um, and I'm just going to kind of talk through and apply these things real quick, like in just a couple of minutes, because that's the other thing about this work, guys. It's instantaneous. We do all the work that we can so that we can pick up a piece of copy and go, boom, I get, I get where I need to be and how I connect up with this and, and how to do it. It's a, it's a very fast, it's a very fast medium. We don't spend weeks with it, right? We, we need to be able to go to see all, see all and go deep into it. So um, hold on one second, because I need to, um, I need to be able to see the copy to be able to read it. Um, and then, ooh, I can scroll down and see the script. This view. Okay, um, let me get back here to the share. We'll get back to it. And, um, All right, so here's the sweet pup. Oh, and now my, oh, we are, we are, I have my cursor and my screen, yay, okay. So, okay, so I look at this um, and it's for a bank. So the first question I'm gonna ask connection wise, I'm just gonna run through connection here. First question I'm gonna ask is, how do I feel about banks? Um, I don't know, I spent like half a, half a day trying to get one transaction at Chase Bank to uh, my horse trainer over the last couple of days. I do not like them, Sam, I am. I do not like them. Um, I go to the SAG-AFTRA Federal Credit Union. They're, they're pretty cool and I do like them. So I'm gonna go in general, um, let's think more that, let's think more SAG-AFTRA credit, Federal Credit Union rather than Pinnacle, rather than Chase Bank, right? So that's where I'm gonna go. Backyard. Okay. I think of my grandfather's backyard. When I was growing up in Chicago, we didn't really have backyard, but we went to my grandfather's uh, backyard and he had a sweet house that he kept perfect care of the lawn and had tomatoes and peonies and little scalloped, scalloped edges to it. So that's, that's where I think, right? Um, Colorado, Northeast. Uh, so this is for kind of places that are sort of have wide open spaces, country places. Um, let's see, um, story time, let's see, how do I feel about that? So the specs are the things that, like, what do we, what do we so male or female, so I'm going to probably go with the female part, right? Uh, 25 to 35, I'm a little older than that, but I can think back to what was important to me when I was 20 to 35, um, a storyteller, so I'm going to share this with you, right? Not an announcer, it's me. This is me, right? So those are the things I take from that. Um, so this is the backyard where the neighborhood kids come to play tag. So I'm going to my grandpa's backyard and I'm, uh, I'm thinking that my Aunt Marie, who's only four years older than I am there, um, my brother, my little brother's there. And then there was Caroline Babula and her brother, Jimmy, um, that we played with. Um, the dog, Angel, the white Samoyed who was kind of cuckoo. Um, and there's the tomatoes that my grandpa, um, my grandpa grew. Um, and so you see, see where I'm going with this? I'm, I'm making it mine. Um, 
Yes. And then I'm going to, um, I'm going to switch gears and, and uh, ask, how do I feel about generations? Right. How do I feel? So my story kind of connects to my grandpa, so it makes sense, right? Um, how do I feel about business? How do I feel about farms? How do I feel about families? How do I feel about someone working with me? Okay, good. And how does that feel to have, to experience that, right? Um, so then I, then I pull on the logic thread a little bit and recognize this is the story part right? Where I'm connecting to it. And the logic is the bank is like that, right? We, you know, this, you feel that this bank is like that. That's how we are. Right? Um, yeah. And then how much energy would this take? Uh, I would say not too much, right? Um, it's kind of a sharing, sharing thing. It's, it's not, it's not a lot of energy to share this story and to let me in, right? I'm going to figure out the pacing. This is the backyard where the neighborhood kids come to play tag, where the dogs run and where time grew a tomato patch. This is the backyard where the wind took the fence and the very next day, dad built a new one, even stronger than before. This is the land. And for generations, Pinnacle Bank has been learning from it and going to work for businesses, for farms, for families. Put us to work for you at pinbank.com. Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be. Member FDIC. Hmm? Take it on a little journey. So, um, so let's see what's going on here. Why is this not going forward? So, um, makes sense. Questions about that? Um, see how these things can work, like just having these simple tools um, can, can go through. So we just went through uh, decision, mindset, technique, application, and we come to support. So one of the things about voiceover that is more and more true than ever before is it is increasingly uh, solitary and isolating. Um, it used to be not as much so because people didn't have booths in their house. So we would go out and see each other every day. Um, but regardless, um, everything on this journey, it's always just you, but you never do it alone. Um, and that that's really what we what we do here it's, it's more important than ever because it is really hard to do on your own that's that's what this this program is um is about it's it's about connecting you with yourself it's about connecting you with the tools of the work and then connecting you with the actual community and the actual doing of it as well um Here's a couple of other folks that, that have been part of the dojo. Uh, David Varela uh, came, came in when he was 23. Um, he uh, he uh, signed with DPN as a non-union talent uh, when he finished. Um, that's what he has to say about here. Um, Mariana, Mariana Duro, she's amazing. She's from Venezuela. She was a, a TV producer in Venezuela and then came here to raise her kids and she was back back for herself and uh stepping into this um amazing tom tom provost is an amazing uh editor and uh, film educator uh finding other aspects of his of his experience it's one of the things that i love about the dojo is that we've got we've got everybody on every step of the journey here um so I want to share a little bit about what's next. And then I also want to, um, I also want to take a little bit of time and answer questions. Uh, we got a little bit of late start and a couple of di difficulties. So I'm going to stay for a little bit over the hour. If you can stay longer, um, that's great. Um, well, let me tell you about what's next and how you can keep in touch. Um, so we would love for you to, to come join us and, and find out what we're doing here and, and how it's all working, obviously. Um, the next step, uh, if you're at the beginning of the journey, is um, the You Should Do Voiceover Intensive Weekend. We are enrolling now. 
um, for the, the upcoming January sessions. Um, we do this as a live weekend intensive, Friday night, all day Saturday and Sunday. Um, and we also do it as a six week virtual intensive. Um, so if you want to come to LA, people do that all the time, come and, and, and come for the weekend. Um, the next dates are coming up January 10th, 11th and 12th. Um, and if you um, would like to join us virtually, we're starting the week after that on January 18th. We're gonna be working on Saturday mornings. Um, the, the way the virtual works is um, you get a sent a lesson, you send a lesson, and then we come together on a call like this and apply the lessons together. Um, so it works, it works from wherever you are, however you are. Now, um, since you are on this call, um, if you sign up by the end of the day, I would like to offer you a hundred dollars off of this, of this program. Um, if you're interested in doing that right now, um, you can go to www.thevodojo.com should be there on the front page and, um, we can do uh, $100 off or uh, the full payment, or if you would, if it's helpful, we can also do three payments of $146. Um, well, I guess for $146.60 to be specific. Um, here's, uh, here's where you can go uh, bit.ly slash YSDVO. You should do voiceover and then use the promo code ASW, Actor Secret Weapon. 100. So this will be good to the end of the day and we'll make it end of Pacific time day. <laughs> so, um, and, um, and then if you have any questions, um, if you have any questions, uh, you can also sign up for a voiceover once over call and uh, talk to either Taylor or myself and we can answer more questions about the program, about anything else. Um, if you want to keep in touch, we'd love for you to, to be part of our Facebook um, and Instagram um, and Twitter communities. Uh, that This is how you uh, can do that. And um, yeah, so, so sign up for VoiceOver once or if you have more questions. Um, let me wrap up here and then, and then I will answer, answer, um, answer your questions. Um, so why... Why do voiceover? Why do voiceover? Two reasons. For love and money. Voiceover requires that you be nimble-minded, open-hearted, focused in action, unstoppable in spirit, available to overflowing abundance and ready for endless possibility. So that is why voiceover should be in, uh, it can be your secret weapon and uh, highly encourage you to explore putting it into your money-making arsenal. So um, good, good, good. So uh, let's answer some questions. Um, so someone had a question, in case anybody hasn't found the chat, someone was asking about how the virtual class uh, works as opposed to uh, sort of what we're doing here. And we just wanted to clarify that um, with the way Zoom is now, everybody's only able to type answers and questions. Mm -hmm. uh, if you were in the virtual class with Tish, you, if you have a, um, a mic and a, a video it could be something just built into your laptop. You're able to be seen and heard the whole time. And um, Tish can talk more about how that works. Yeah, yeah. So this is, we're working today in a webinar format. So it's, we're just interacting through the webinar chat, right? But imagine that like Taylor just came on um, and she just has a still because she doesn't have her video on. But imagine that each of us had a little square and we were all interacting. So it's kind of like being in the same room together, but we're in different rooms, right? So it's, it's very much this format, but you would, you would be right here too. You'd be right next to me. Um, so it's actually, it's actually brilliant how I've been so thrilled about how um, intimate uh, actually you really get to know each other working this way. Um, 
like I said, Anne and Ken Gunzer, um, we didn't meet until the end of, of her 14 months. She came out to do her demo, but I knew her so well um, <laughs> that oftentimes. So is that helpful? Um, um, yeah, I think that's great. Uh, so Lauren is asking, do we have any recommendations about um, resources in terms of copy? So we want to be practicing at home. We want to be uh, working through some of the skills you just shared with us. Mm -hmm. How do we find real copy that we can use to strengthen those skills? Um, let's see. A couple, couple ways that you can play around and approach this. Um, one, one way that you can kind of, you can start exploring and there's a big caveat, right? One really fun, simple way to do it is to pick up a magazine, right? Now, the caveat is that a magazine is written for, um, to be read, right? It's a different medium. It's written to be read. Um, so you need to take that into account. But that being said, if you look at a magazine ad, it's really like a TV spot with training wheels, right? because there's a visual image that tells the story. And then you have all these awesome clues in the typography and the design that lets you know what is the feeling of the idea, um, what are the main ideas, and what are the more, uh, you know, the fine prints, right? So you can play around with that, and then you get all sorts of different energies from different demographics, from different magazines, right? Keeping in mind that you like wouldn't necessarily put that in that form on your demo because it's a print ad, right? Um, when you're with the dojo, um, we give you so much copy to work on. It's crazy. <laughs> the, the you should do voiceover. Uh, you leave with a copy bible that has like 150 pages of copy and all the ideas that we're talking about. And then in the course of the uh, in course of the the work, um, you know, at, at each belt belt level, you get your own copy folder um sort of thing so and we have a copy bible that's that's available to you as well um let's do two more questions and then um and then i would love you have more questions i would love to um have you sign up for voiceover once over and be happy to spend time with you taylor can talk with you as well um talk about what's going on. and if you you know want to just cut to the chase um uh um, hop, hop right in. <laughs> then we got one more question from Daphne. Um, oh, what an awesome about, name. About <laughs> uh, descriptors. So sometimes we see descriptors in, um, you know, the, the people who are, who are trying to hire somebody, they're looking for something smooth, modern, casual. And sometimes mm -hmm. these words come to us and you, and you think, what does that mean? How do you, how do you deal with uh, descriptors in, in things oh, like that? Oh, interesting. Uh, Okay, well, so first of all, I'll, I'll say there's, there's so, so many layers of this. So first of all, that description is called the spec, the specification, right? So the real cut to the chase thing about this is whenever you see a spec, just say, oh, they're looking for me. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, they're looking for me. Excellent. So who am I when I am smooth? Who am I when I am this? Who am I when I am la, 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 right? So just bring all the copy to you is really what we do right? What's your version of that? Um, and also, there is no they, there's only us. <laughs> there's only, there's only we, right? So if you, if you also approach it like, what is they, they, what do they want? Oh, what can I bring? What do I have and what am I bringing? So, um, and then also just to tie this all up, um, all the, to tie this all up, um, this is where the nimble mindedness comes. I don't know. I don't know. What does it mean to you? What is smooth? How could you explore that? You know, uh, you know, these velvet pants are smooth. This glass thing is smooth, but they're different, right? So this is where the, I don't know what it is. And what we do is uh, we develop our skills so we can go boom, boom, could be all of this and boom, this is the choice I'm making right now. Great, and I'm gonna make another choice, right? So that's the, 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 the specs are just guidelines to ignite our imagination. And then our skills is being able to go there and make specific strong choices on each day. So um, yeah, that's a great place. That's a great place to wrap up. Um, guys, thank you so, so much. I am looking forward to being in touch with all of you. Um, if you are interested in joining us in January, 
please, please, please sign up by tonight for the hundred dollars off. Um, and sign up anytime if you're interested. Um, I so appreciate you taking this time and um, look forward to getting to work and play with you in the future. Um, Taylor, thank you so much for being here. Um, you get to talk to Taylor, talk to me, um, and we will look forward to seeing you here at the dojo very soon. Okay, thanks, bye.